Blog Talk Radio. Dr. Sabrina is not going to be with us tonight. She had to go to Tallahassee. They're having some sort of a thing over there for her class, and so we just wish her traveling grace and for the Lord to be with her. 
and that she will meet some exciting people that she went to school with and that she'll be able to lift up the name of Jesus to them. So we give God the glory for her life and we ask for divine protection in Jesus' name. I see our co-host is up, uh, Brother Marshall. Hello? Brother Marshall. Uh-oh. Brother Marshall, speak. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Just, I bind you devils in the name of Jesus for coming against this radio program. I break your powers over the sound right now and whoever. I command. My phone is muted and it won't come unmuted. There you go. And my phone isn't home. Glory to God. Well, I'm going to go up on the uh, internet and see if. Can you hear me, Nicole? Can you hear me? Praise the Lord. The only thing I know to do is to hang up and try to call back in because Marshall's got his hand up. So let me try that. Hold on. Marshall, can you hear me now? Oh, heaven. Marshall can't hear me. The people can hear me, but Marshall can't hear me. Uh, Marshall, call back. I can't get Marshall up. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Uh, Marshall's going to call back, and so meantime, if you can hear me, we're just going to go on and start the teaching. You know, I'm never uh, um, uh, cease to amaze me in 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 today's world with what's going on with the um, with the uh, world that has come into the church. Today, well, I'll talk about that in a minute, but first let's talk about what the subject's going to be. Uh, We're going to talk to you about the cage of birds. Uh, The Bible tells us that, um, you know, birds are, birds in the Bible are like, um, they're like uh, symbology for devils. So now I'm going to read this scripture in Jeremiah 5:27, and it says, "As a bird is full, uh, as a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore, they are become great, waxen rich; they are waxen fat; they shine; yea, they overpass the the deeds." 
of the wicked. They judge not the cause, uh, the cause of the fatherless, yet they prosper. And right in the needy, they do not judge. Now, that is in Jeremiah uh, 27, 28. We are going to... Um, we're going to talk to you tonight about uh, birds or, or demons that cage people. Uh, many years ago, uh, I was uh, I had ministered to a wizard and cast the demons out of him, and he discussed things with me, and he said that they cage people. And so uh, if they cage people, uh, I said, what does that mean? And to the wizard, what it meant was that they take the people, they do a ritualism on the people, and they put them in a spiritual cage. And when they put them in that spiritual cage, what happens is that that cage uh, they, the person can only do and act as uh, as the uh, witch that has control of them and the demons that have control of them allow them to act. Now, if you can see a bird cage, you will see that a bird, uh, it can go back and forth in the cage, it can circle the cage, but it's very limited. It cannot fly. It cannot do the things that it was created to do. Well, when a human being is in a cage that demons have built around that human being, then that human being is stuck. And that human being is in serious problems that they can only do those things that those uh, spirits allow them to do. Now, Marshall, if you can hear me, I want you to put your hand up. Uh, I see your phone, but I don't see your hand up. So if Marshall can hear me, put your hand up, Marshall. And um, maybe Alex will come home while we're on the radio and maybe we can get get this thing fixed. It's my phone. The mute button isn't working.
Declared to join our Lord Jesus Christ in nature. <laughs> Thank you. 
For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest that he may destroy the works of the devil. And Jesus said, Rather with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that wrote against us, which once conquered to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Thanks for that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm reconnected now. So sorry. Let's see if we can get Marshall up. Marshall? Speak into the phone and say hello. Hello. How are you doing, Marshall? I'm doing well. And you? I'm doing good. Uh, Now, I want you to pray like we're just opening up the show. And I'll go up and see if the people can hear Marshall, because I okay. can hear you. Thank you, okay. Father, for this wonderful day. Amen. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for every good and every perfect gift that cometh down from above, from you, Father of lights, with whom is no variable, no shadow of turning. Thank you for the extraordinary gift of your only begotten Son. Thank you for the gift of faith. Thank you for shedding your blood to purchase us, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your amazing love for each one of us. We thank you, we praise you, that even while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We give you praise. Father, we we ask you, Father, to be fully in charge of this gathering tonight. 
In Jesus' name, we ask you to have your way with each one of us, each one of our hearts and minds. And I plead the blood of Jesus over each one of our hearts and minds of all those that are calling in. And we ask you to inspire those that you want to listen when you want, whether it be tonight or, or later on. But cause them to listen when you want. And, and quick and pat in particular, but all of us to speak all and only what you want to bring you honor and glory. And we give you praise. And we bind every interfering spirit, every spirit of voice, every scrambling spirit, every interfering spirit, every witchcraft curses return sevenfold with continual repetitions to those that send them. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who has purchased us with his own blood, who says, Thou shalt decree a thing, and shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. And the Lord is our light and our salvation. Whom shall we fear? The Lord is the strength of our life. Of whom shall we be afraid? And we thank you for your amazing, amazing provisions for us, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. We plead the blood of Jesus over each one of us that are members of the body of Christ, particularly over Dr. Holliday and all those that will be ministering in Jesus' name and all their family members. And we thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being your priest to you, Father God, under our, our high priest, the Lord Jesus, according to what's written in Revelation chapter 1, 5, and 6. And from Jesus Christ was the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Glory and dominion to you, King Jesus, forever and ever. Glory and dominion to you, Heavenly Father, forever and ever. We give you praise and honor and glory. And we, from our position seated in Christ Jesus in the heavenlies, according to Ephesians 2, 6, and according to the end of Psalm 91, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Father, for raising us up together with Christ Jesus that we're seated in him in the heavenlies. And from our position seated in Christ Jesus and in your presence is fullness of joy and the joy of the Lord is our strength. We take authority over every hindering spirit, every ungodly spirit and we speak mutinous to the mouths of the enemy in Jesus name, blindness to the eyes of the enemy and they may only hear what Jesus Christ of Nazareth wants them to hear pertaining to what's going forth in Jesus name by the power of the Holy Spirit in that name above all names in whose name every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. For this purpose the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Thank you, Jesus, for destroying the works of the devil. He said, Father, I've finished the work thou gavest me to do. It is finished. We thank you for your amazing provision, Lord. We thank you for the power of your cross. From that position, seated in Christ Jesus, we bind cage and chain. All ungodly spirits sent forth. We put a, a tent over every one of the ungodly meetings, and every one of the hexes, vexes, and curses fall back on those that are sending them, unless they repent in the time frame Jesus Christ of Nazareth gives them to repent in Jesus' name. And we limit every move of the enemy in Jesus' name by the power of the Holy Spirit. Whatever you bind is bound. We bind every ungodly spirit, and we cancel their assignment, every spirit of pride, rebellion, and idolatry, bound, caged, and chained, coming against Blog Talk Radio and Dr. Holliday and any member of the body of Christ, particularly those with whom we have to do. And we thank you, Lord for hanging on that tree. We thank you for paying the price for each one of us. We thank you for the victory that you won on Calvary. Thank you, Lord, for choosing that that hill, your hill, hallelujah, the same place, the same place where Father Abraham offered Isaac, the same place where King David offered up uh, uh, an, an, an offering of oxen, hallelujah, as, as an offering to, to ask for forgiveness for numbering the people at the threshing floor of Aruna the Jebusite. We thank you, Lord Jesus. You were threshed on that threshing floor. You are the wheat, the kernel of wheat sent into the earth. Thank you for that living bread from heaven. Thank you that you were threshed and beaten in our place, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you paid the full price. We thank you, Father, you're not going to punish us and, and the Lord Jesus if we repent of our sins. And we have repented of all sins, known and unknown. And we give you praise, Father, for all that you've already done and going to do in Jesus' name. We thank especially for Colossians chapter 2, 14 and 15, that you blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and you took it out of the way, nailing it to your cross, Lord Jesus. And having spoiled principalities and powers, you made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. We thank you that you triumphed over the enemy openly in that cross, and we give you praise and honor, Lord Jesus, in Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love, Lord. We put a gag in every one of the ungodly spirits' mouths that would try to interfere with Blog Talk Radio and whatever the Lord wants to be done tonight to be done. In Jesus' name. And, Father, Jesus said unto us, He who purchased us with his own blood, who has all power in heaven and earth, says in Luke 10, 19, and 20, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice 
that your names are written in heaven. And we do rejoice, Lord Jesus, that you've engraved our name in the palms of of your head. We do rejoice that you keep us as the apple of your eye. We rejoice, Father, that you've loved us with an everlasting love. Say you sent your Son to redeem us, to purchase us with his own blood. We give you praise and honor. Thank you for your blood. Thank you, Lord, for being a wall of fire round about in the glory and the mist, as it is written in Zechariah 2.5. We thank you for your glory for a defense. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so is the Lord round about his people. And we thank you. We give you praise, Lord, in Jesus' wonderful name. Thank you, Abba. Thank you for your provisions for each one of us. And, Lord, you said that we could decree a thing, and it would be established unto us. So I decree and declare in Jesus' name that no ungodly spirit may interfere with a single word of the true and living God from coming into any one of our hearts and minds that have been listening will be listening to the word of God in Jesus' name, the true word of God which in the English language is most accurately presented in the King James Bible. And we thank you. We thank you for your word that's been preserved through many generations and through much much hardship. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. You endured sufferings as a good soldier, Lord. You endured the sufferings for the body of Christ. You laid down your life for us. And we thank you. You're the good shepherd. You're the good shepherd. And the good shepherd gives us life for the sheep. You had power to lay it down, and you had power to take it up again. And no ungodly spirit may snatch away or steal a single word of the true and living God from any one of our hearts and minds in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And no one godly spirit may interfere with a single word of the true and living God from being expressed with clarity, easily to be understood, verbally and or non-verbally, by every member of the body of Christ with whom anything whatsoever to do in Jesus' name. Whatever the Lord Jesus wants to be done will be done in Jesus' name. For he has all power in heaven and in earth, as it is written in Matthew 28, 18. And he cannot lie. He is... I am that I am. He is the Almighty. He said, if we do not believe that he is I am, we will die in our sins, but we do believe that you are I am, even as it is written in the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 24, verse 28, verse 58. We thank you, Lord, for your word, that before Abraham was, you said, I am. You're the same I am who spoke to Moses out of the burning bush. You are from everlasting. You were not a created being. You are the creator And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming in the flesh. We thank you that you suffered as a man, so you know what it's like. And we thank you that someday, maybe sooner than most of us realize, that we'll be standing before that judgment seat of Christ, hopefully to only receive rewards and say, well done, good and faithful servant. But Lord, help us all to be ready. Help us to have our garments pressed and white in Jesus. And we thank you for the gift of righteousness. We give you praise, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that... Even as as uh, <clears throat> when Moses and Aaron went before the, the Pharaoh in Egypt and they threw down their rod, and it said Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. We're so grateful, Lord Jesus, that you became a fiery serpent for us, even as it is written over in Numbers uh, 21, um, starting in verse 8, because that's what you did. You became a fiery serpent for us. Father, you made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And we thank you, Lord, that the snake that is in us, that is Christ, is greater than the snake that's in the world. How greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world? Because you swallowed up their snakes. You followed up, swallowed up the, the staff that turned into snakes of the magicians, as it is written in, in um, Exodus. And we're so grateful, Lord. We're so, we praise you. We bless you. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise and honor and glory. And we thank you for this opportunity to get together and truly to worship you. Father, we know that you're looking for those to worship you in spirit and in truth. And Jesus Christ is the truth, because he said before Abe, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's not just a life. He is the life. He's the prince of life. He's the author of life. And we thank you for being our life. You said in in Colossians 3 that Christ is our life. And Jesus said in in John chapter 6, He that eateth me shall live by me. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And you are the very word of God. And thy word is unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart, as it says in Jeremiah 15, 16. And as it says in Jeremiah 33, 16, And she is called by thy name, the Lord our righteousness, Yahweh Tzikenu. We thank you for being our righteousness, because that's your name, and that's her name, the female version. The bride of Christ is the Lord, our righteousness. Help us all to be ready, Lord Jesus, when we hear that, even before we hear that trumpet blast and the shout of the archangel, 
Hallelujah. Help us to be ready for that day when you're returning, because we know you're returning, because you said you were, and we know you're faithful, they're promised, and we're looking for that day coming soon to a planet near us, <laughs> right here. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for changing us all from glory to glory as we behold your glory. Help us to be sanctified. Help us to be vessels of honor. Help us to be ready. And help us to be careful, Lord, very, very careful, because you said the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, that God peradventure will grant them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth that they will recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Those have been taken captive by him at his will, at the devil's will. So, Lord, and I know I've been there, <laughs> and I don't want to go there anymore. So we ask, Father, that you will show us and teach us, because you said, all of my children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of my children. You teach us how to walk in love, to walk in the Spirit, to walk in in light, day by day more perfectly than we did the day before, that you'll change us truly from glory to glory. We thank you for hearing our prayers, Father, because of the blood of the covenant that speaketh better things than that of Abel. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for your beating angels, guardian angels, warring angels. We thank you for sending additional warring angels to watch over each one and all those that are listening and going to be listening, Father God, and all their family members. We thank you, Father, for sending the Holy Spirit to draw us all to the Lord Jesus afresh. We thank you for your loving kindness, your love, your strength, and your steadfastness. We thank you for drawing us to Lord Jesus afresh and granting us every gift we need by your good spirit, including not only the gifts of miracles and prophecy and interpretation of tongues, but the gift of discernment, Lord, that we will discern in these days especially, that we will discern what you want us to discern, that we'll, we'll, we'll be able to say, oh, that's not of the Lord, and, and walk away. Those who... Um, how does it go? Uh, having a, I don't remember the particular scripture right now, but there's some people that that say, you know, God's not doing things today. You know, He's th- that passed away with the disciples. You know, not that they have a scripture to stand on, because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And in Malachi three six it says, "I am the Lord; I change not." So I don't know why they think He changed, but anyway. But Lord, we know. That, that you want us to discern what's what's appropriate. The strong meat belong to them who, who, by, who have, by reason of use, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So, Lord, as much as we'd rather only think about the good things in Jesus all the time, sometimes we need to discern good and evil. So help us to discern it, even as you told the Apostle Paul, he had a good gift of discernment, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that even when the damsel in Acts 16 came and said, these men teach you the way, these are the servants of the Most High God, they tell you the way to eternal life, something to that effect. And 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 it wasn't long before he realized he needed to bind that spirit and cast it out of her, because she wasn't doing that by the Holy Spirit, she was doing that by a different spirit. So help us all to have the gifts that we need, including the gift of the sermon by your good spirit, Father, that we will walk safely in the way you want us to go, in the way of holiness, Lord, in Jesus' name. And we know that no ravenous beast will enter there up, there on in that way, the way you've chosen for us to go, following after Jesus. And we thank you for that, Lord. And we know the servant is not above his master. And Jesus suffered <laughs> tremendously. So we know that it says we, we, we those who will live uh, godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. So that's what one of the promises you give us. It's not the one we all look forward to, but that's in the book. So if that's what's to be, then that's what to be. We ask you to protect your children and deliver them. You said you deliver us out of every evil way. Over in in um, in Psalm 34, I know you said you deliver us from, from all those things, Father. We ask you to continue to do so. And it is written, call upon the name of the Lord and you will be delivered. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. Because Jesus said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Ask and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. So we thank you for fullness of joy, Heavenly Father. We thank you for that anointing that abideth. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Even as you anointed our head, the head of every man is Christ. You anointed him with the Holy Ghost and with power, but you anointed him with that oil of joy above his gladness. We thank you, Lord. Oh, here it is. It's in Psalm 34, 19. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. But the Lord delivereth them out of them all. So we thank you for delivering us out of every affliction. We ask you to do so, Lord, for all your saints, Father God, 
those that are called to be saints, or even before the foundation of the world. Do I understand that? No, but you do. <laughs> so we thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Father, for your mercy and your grace and your compassions that are new every day. We ask you to be fully in charge of this blog talk broadcast, Father God, that you'll quicken us to hear the way you want us to and ask you to inspire Pat by your good spirit to share as you would want her to, Father, and help us to hide your word in our hearts that we will not sin against you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. How have you been, Brother Marshall? I am blessed and highly favored and rapidly improving, and I don't have to go by what I see, hear, feel, smell, or taste, because that always doesn't speak of the truth. The Word of God is true, and Jesus came to speak of the truth. And for those who love the truth, then we can be saved. And I was just meditating on that a little earlier today, that even as I know you point to that more than once, I think it's in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, somewhere in there, that, that yeah, somewhere in there, it, it talks about... Um, if if we have a love for the truth, then we can be saved. But there's some people who would rather go after other things, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, I think that's where it is. Well, that, yeah, they, there it is, well, in 2 Thessalonians. What's Amen. That I said that's why we're up here is to help people. Well, I, I started the show. I couldn't get through to you, so I started... And I gave a little bit about the uh, cage full of demons or the cage full of birds. And uh, what 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 somebody had sent me an email today about a couple in Florida that have a ministry, and they call it the Swingers Ministry, where they're encouraging uh, wives and husbands to wife swap. And yeah, I couldn't believe it, but it's true. And so since we were talking about a cage full of birds, uh, I wanted to uh, just work it in so that people can understand clearly what we're trying to teach them. You know, that is really spiritual blindness. It's spiritual disconnected from the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost has no part in the sins of the flesh. And as a matter of fact, over the history of uh, of the Bible, we see that uh, through the na- uh, the ages that the devil used the lust flesh to en- ensnare the mighty, including King David and King Solomon, and really King Ahab and the rest of them. And he's working more openly than ever before in our time, to trap the uh, young and the old. And he uses pornography, even magazine ads, uh, suggestive clothing, uh, sex films, television. And he's building up an acceptance of premarital sex, a self-same marriage sex, homosexuality, and prostitution. Now, it's only a matter of time before they will change the laws of the land to include that prostitution and child molestation is not not a sin and against the law with the way that they've been pushing forward uh, since, uh, well, in the last few years. Now, I know that that sounds extreme and people say, no, that'll never happen. Well... I can remember that we used to say that the homosexual uh, thing would never happen, and it has happened. And so we have to prepare ourselves to live in an unholy pagan land as a holy person, just like Daniel did. And uh, he just stayed faithful and true to God no matter what the king did, He just kept his eye on the ball, and he knew that God was God, and he wasn't going to turn away. That's where we have to be, because you see, Satan is out to destroy the home and the sanctity of marriage and also the individual. He wants to take the families. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about the lust of the flesh, sexual sin, as you might remember, and I went into Galatians 5, uh, verse 19, 
And it says the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresy, envy, and murders, drunkening, drunkenness, reveling, and such like of which I tell you before, as I have told you in the past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So you see, you have men in Christian churches that have not changed their perspective concerning their loose lives before they said the sinner's prayer. And a lot of them will say the sinner's prayer, but they will just continue their sin life. And one of the problems that we're seeing up in our area is that we lead people to the Lord. We're seeing the Lord heal people. Uh, We're seeing the Lord even deliver people. But where we're having problems is getting the people to come to church, to sit under the word so that they can be taught and so that they can be delivered from these sins of the flesh, these demons that the Bible just described to us. And yes, they are demons. So if you were to go over in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, uh, and verse 10, the Bible goes on to say, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. And then it goes to tell you who the unrighteous are. And it says, Neither fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, effeminate, abusers of themselves with mankind shall inherit the kingdom of God. And so we know from Exodus twenty fourteen that adultery, uh, I mean adultery, is unfaithfulness in marriage. Now there used to be a couple of guys that would come over to the ministry, miracle ministry, and um, they would go to all the various churches in town. And uh, so one day I ran into someone. Uh, And they told me, they said, those two guys, they are spiritual or hustlers. I said, what in God's name is that? And they said, well, they go from one church to the next looking for women that they can seduce. And so uh, women are infiltrating into the churches also. Uh, According to the uh, ministers over in Africa, They told us, they said that uh, Satan's agents are sent into the churches from the city under the sea for the purpose of destroying souls and to luring pastors and the congregation uh, up under their power through friendship and into sin. And if they can get you to fall into these dark sins, They can grab your soul. So it's a very important thing to understand because of the fact that in our days, sex is good according to the television. Sex is good in a marriage. But according to the the television, the main goal in every program, every sitcom, is either to get Uh, the other person's wife in the bed, Uh, the cops, the lawyers, the doctors, they're all having sexual affairs in the soap operas. And uh, also nowadays you've got the homosexuals active in their little part of sexual lust and because it's no longer frowned down and average people will sit there and laugh at that stuff and think, oh, wasn't that funny? And all it is is to mind control you to into that lifestyle so that you think it's okay. Now, in Proverbs 6, 32, 33, uh, the Bible says, 
but also committeth adultery with a woman, lacketh understanding. He that does it destroyeth his own soul. The Bible is so clear about uh, these uh, lust of the flesh, so clear. And here comes Jesus speaking in Matthew five twenty seven twenty eight and uh, verse thirty two. The Bible says, "Ye have heard that it was said by them of old, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh at a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her, that is, uh, divorced, committeth adultery. And so the old standard, just because we live in the age of sin and we live in that hour when there's a great falling away from the church, it doesn't mean that God is going to wink at these things because he's not. And uh, the pastors, they're going to have to answer for the fact that uh, the people in their congregations were bound with sin, and they were also bound with these spirits that we, that we just talked about and these sexual lusty sins. And uh, they are going to be held accountable for these souls that are passing into hell because of the fact that uh, that they're not teaching on sin because, after all, we can't fill our churches up if we preach about sin. Nobody will come. Well, you know, I told the Lord many years ago, I'm going to go into this your way. I'm going to do what you call me to do. And uh, in the beginning, we had a lot of hungry Christians coming through the ministry for miracles and deliverance. But as the infiltration began to roll in to the charismatic and the Pentecostal movement, uh, the ministry became tougher and tougher to attract people to come because of the fact that uh, they were they began to listen to the ser- the loose sermons and they began to uh, live in the flesh and you know Jesus told us to flee fornication and uh, so they wanted to they wanted to watch television go to the movies and do whatever they wanted to do and they wanted to have their Christian cake and eat it too. And I'm just going to tell you that God turned his face away. I remember several years ago, uh, the Lord had spoken to me, and he said the reason reason that revival has tarried is uh, because of the lust of the flesh, and it's coming right from the pulpit. And that was before it became visible. It was before we began to see famous people divorcing their wives and marrying younger women. And uh, it, it, it eventually came to the point that when they divorced their wives, they were able to just get right back up into the pulpit and preach as if nothing had happened. There was a case here in Jacksonville so many years ago where uh, the pastor and the wife came in, she was co-pastor, and they announced to the church that they were getting a divorce, that they were just not compatible anymore. And in the uh, in the Florida laws back in the 70s, the women livers were able to uh, strike down the uh, divorce laws so that it made it easier and easier and easier for people to get divorces. And they also strike down the divorce laws that protected the women that stay in the homes to raise the children. And I'm talking about alimony now. 
And so as they work to strike those laws down, now if you go into court and the woman is making more money, hey, guys, you can get the kids and get the alimony too. And so women are no longer protected in America because the women livers have won the battle. The only ones that are protected are the ones that live for Jesus and put Jesus in the center of their marriage so that they can live holy lives, so that they're not looking for the swingers and the crazy people that are out there trying to draw them away from Christ into the sins of the flesh. Now, in Second uh, Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, the Bible says, Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So God is warning you to associate yourself with people that know Jesus and that people that have a pure heart toward the word and that will tell you when you need to be told strong things because your soul is at danger and the minister is going to be called accountable to, for your soul. That doesn't mean that if you're sneaking around or watching a pornography on the radio or on the TV or wherever you get it, in the magazines or whatever, that that, pre- that preacher or a teacher that is teaching the word and telling you that that's wrong, that person will not have to give an account for your soul in that area because they have warned you. So you're responsible for your sin. It's the responsibility of the preacher to tell you the truth. So many years ago, when I told Jesus I would do this his way, whenever the crowds begin to get smaller and smaller, and they have and they still are, uh, I just said, Lord, I will stand and preach the word as long as you tell me to. Just me and you in the room, and you're telling me to preach the word. That's what I will do. And so uh, you have to follow Jesus above everything. You have to do it his way. You cannot do it your way. Now, the spirit of perversion, it um, it was a secret spirit in America whenever I first got into the ministry. And if you were to read my book, Being Free, up on Amazon Kindle, it's an e-book or Kindle book, uh, that's one of the first books that I wrote or the second one or something like that. And in that book, several homosexuals came to our meeting for uh, deliverance. And several lesbians came through. And I talked about how we drove the spirits out of them and how they made a recommitment with the Lord. Well, back in those days, I started telling the pastors, I said, homosexuality and lesbianism is just an evil spirit. I have cast it out many times. And they would say to me, no, people are born that way. There's nothing we can do. Well, there is something we can do. We can do deliverance, and the spirit has to go. And then, a little bit later on in the ministry, I had an opportunity to start going into uh, uh, Key West. And when I first went in there, uh, everything was fine. Uh, The churches were functioning just fine. And then finally one day I went in there, And uh, Key West Mayor had put an ad into the gay magazine. And when he put the ad in the magazines, it was inviting all of the homosexual and gay people to come to Key West and make that their Riviera. Well, they did. Now, the church did not know what to do. And I came in and um, the pastor's... uh, didn't know what to do about the homosexuality. And so they just ignored it. And so uh, 
I was in a church and uh, in a morning service. I taught about uh, the deliverances that uh, I had seen God do in the Be Free book. And um, you can get a copy of that Be Free book if you uh, mail me uh, at uh, uh, 9252 San Jose Boulevard, 2804-2804. Three two two five seven. Uh, you can find that address probably up on my website, patholiday dot com, and then the other one is miracleinternetchurch dot com, and we'll send you that if you'll just send a little uh, enough for us to pay for the mail, and we'll mail that book to you free. And um, so the pastors didn't believe us, and so. I was preaching how we had uh, done the deliverance on the homosexuals and how the power of God was just so powerful. And at the altar call, uh, two gay people came forward and they were, uh, they told me, they said, we've heard your message and you said that God is so powerful that he can cast these gay spirits out of us. And if he can do it, we want to be free. So I cast the day, uh, these gay spirits out. They weren't even calling it gay back then. I cast it out of them, and uh, they got up from the floor shouting. And so then, uh, after the meeting was over, one of the ladies came up and talked to me, and she said, you know, she said, uh, that that those people, those men, uh, drove a trailer up on the church ground, and they asked the pastor if they could park there for a couple of days. And he was just thrilled that they were going to hear the word, and so they were parked there. And so he, she said, most of the people in the church left the church. And I noticed that at that meeting that I was in, there was only a few people that had come to the meeting whereas the year before I had packed the, the church out. So then uh, the, the, uh, what the pastors have done is over the years, they just ignore problems and they think they go away, but they don't go away. They're eventually going to come back and smack them right into the face. But anyway, the story on the two gay couple, or the gay couple, I never heard from one of them. But the second one, um, one day my sister came to see me, and she was living out west. And uh, she told me this story. She said, Pat, she said, do you know a, a man by the name of whatever it was? And I said, no. Well, he knows you. I said, how does he know me? She said, well, he, you were ministering down in Esmeralda uh, Island in Key West. And he said, uh, she said, he came in, and you cast a gay spirit out of him and his uh, friend. And I said, yeah, I do remember that. She said, well, you know, he told me. He said, tell your sister. I pray for her every day, and I praise God for her. He said, because... What happened is I left key, the keys and came home. I got my life in shape. I went into the ministry. And then I went down into the islands and started preaching. And I've opened up many churches all over the islands. And you tell her that I praise God for her. So you never really get, as an evangelist, you don't get the end result of uh a lot of work that you do, you'll receive the information when you stand before the throne of God of some of the miracles and the deliverances and the th- the things that you did while you were traveling around. Uh, as a pastor, you get to see some of the stuff. You get to see how people react to God uh, clearer than you do as an evangelist. And when God called me as a pastor, I begged him. I said, please, I do not want to do that, uh, and I don't want to teach. That's what he called me to do, the very things that I didn't want to do. 
Well, you know why I didn't want to do them? Because I had read in the Word that uh, those that teach are going to give a stronger witness before the judgment seat of God about their ministry. And so I was going to take that easy road. Well, I also read that we are responsible for those that come up underneath our ministries to teach the word in truth and to uh, to warn the saints of the dangers that are coming, which I've always done. Well, it will drive people out of your church. You will not have a big church if you preach the truth. If you do the word of God as Jesus Christ himself did it, you probably will not have a big ministry because of the fact that particularly here in America, people are taught that people that cast devils out are weird and that they don't have it going on in their church because those people are in error. And also they're taught uh, to, uh, to sin. So the congregation is under a spirit of bewitchment just as surely as the congregation in Galatians was under a bewitching spirit when Paul came back and visited them. He left a holy church and came back to a church that was in perversion and that had fallen away from the Lord because those sins that are in Galatians chapter 5 He names each and every sin that that church had fallen into. And you can see from those scriptures that I read that adultery and fornication was among those sins. So you see, we're not the first church in history that has dealt with these things. We may well be the last church before the Lord Jesus Christ returns. So we have to understand that According to the word of God, that um, God requires of his believers to have a pure mind. And in Philippians 4, uh, uh, chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatso, uh, uh, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Now, this is directly related to your sin life. Now, when people get in trouble, that have a problem with sin life, uh, I can I can honestly tell you that the problem comes directly, directly from their minds. You have to think about it before you do it. And if you think about it and if you dwell on it, then a spirit of obsession will come upon you and it will take a circle around and around in your mind so that you cannot get that thing off of your mind. And as your mind uh, uh, thinks upon that thing uh, constantly, it becomes uh, what the Bible calls an oppression. And that means that a devil from the outside of you is placing that on your mind. And as long as you think about it, Uh, the devil will eventually have enough power to come and take over your mind. And so when the Bible tells us to think on these things, whatsoever things are true and honest and just, and I just read them all to you, you're not supposed to be thinking about adultery. You're not supposed to be thinking about women. You're not supposed to be thinking about the pretty lady that just started to your church that you might think is prettier than your wife. You're supposed to think about your wife, and you're supposed to get your eyes off of that woman. And you might have to do a spiritual warfare yourself 
to be able to walk into church and not even look over in her direction because you're a man or you're a woman and you were made that way. Sex is good in marriage. But once you get married, then you have to ask God to help you to shield yourself from the temptations that will surely come because the devil is a master tempter and he knows how to hit your mind and he knows how to hit your flesh. And so the Bible's telling us to think on these things. That's what we have to do. We have to think on the good things. And the minute you see and you hear the word, wouldn't you like to know more about her? Or you just stare at her in awe. You make your head go in a different direction. And you pray and say, God, I plead the blood of Jesus over my mind. I thank you for your divine protection. I thank you that you're God. I thank you for everything that you've done for me. I thank you for that raise you gave me yesterday. I thank you for such a wonderful wife. And you start talking to the Lord, and the devil has lost its power because you have resisted the devil. And James chapter 5 says, resist the devil, and then he flees. So you have to resist, and you resist with your mind. Hello. And then... Sometimes you resist with your mouth, but instantly you start resisting with your mind because of the fact that if you don't and you engage in these sins that are clearly shown over in Romans chapter 1, verse 24, 32, and let me tell you about it before I read it. Romans is the first chapter of Romans is a uh, is a story of man's descent down into sin. When you read that chapter, and it keeps uh, when it gets down to Romans chapter one verse twenty four to thirty two, when it gets to the very end, tells you what God does when a person descends down into these sins because God moves. When you descend into sin, the hand of God will move on your life. And your only hope is to ask God to help you to get out of it and stop while you still hear the message and while you still have time. So Romans 1, 24, 32 says, Whence for God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. So who gave them up? Did the devil tempt them? No, God just gave up on them because he kept he kept telling them not to do this, not to do that. And finally, God just gives up. When you want to do it your way, So you better submit to God just as soon as you can and as quick as you can because he will give you up. And then it goes on to say that uh, why he gave them up. It says, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Now, Who is the creature? It's self-love. You are the creature. And if you're engaged in these loose self-practices with someone else, then that's a creature too. So you're going after the flesh of yourself and after the flesh of another, and you've replaced God with that person or you've replaced God with yourself. Now going on. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affection. In other words, when God gives you up, your mind will become totally polluted. And like that cup swinging ministry, they won't see anything wrong with what they're doing until they stand before the judgment seat of God 
And all of those souls that they have induced into these sins uh, will go to hell right along with them. What a judgment. And so then it goes on to say, I'm still in Romans one twenty four thirty two. It says, for this cause God gave them up unto foul affections, for even their women did change the natural use unto that which is against nature. So there's your lesbian women there, and there's also your uh, oral sex there, because that's uh, against nature. The oral sex is practiced by the homosexual. And you can say the marriage bed is undefiled. I've taught you about that. Go up and read the whole scripture and study the whole essence of the spirit and find out that God isn't going to say it, that it's wrong for the homosexuals to commit sodomy, but it's okay for married people to do that. That would make us have a confused God. Now, and likewise, also, men leaving the natural use of a woman burned in their lust for one toward another. Men working with men, that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves recompense for their error which was met. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. God, uh, uh, now, see, they decided they didn't want to know God. They don't want you to talk to them about God. They don't want to hear it. Well, here's what God does. It says, and God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Now, the reprobate mind is the last level of your mind deterioration. Uh, in these scriptures. And so uh, very few get out. I've seen seen them get out. I truly have seen and delivered homosexuals. I've delivered uh, probably a half a dozen different men that had AIDS, from AIDS and homosexuality. So God will deliver them. And uh, so you have to leave tracks and you have to keep uh, just speak in the name of Jesus. They might not like it, but just keep telling them about Jesus. And then it goes on to say, God gave them a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled. Now listen to what they're filled with. All unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, Full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, uh, malignity, uh, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedience to parents, without natural affection, (laughs) pliable, Uh, They which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So in other words, story of lust that we've heard today. And it's the story of being caged into the powers and under the powers of the devils of lust. They've encaged that mind. They've encaged that body. And they drive that body just to entertain these things that we're preaching to you about today. Now, the spirit of of pornography is very, very prevalent in the church. There's even pastors in some of the churches that are slyly going up on the Internet and looking at pornography because they think nobody can see them. Well, let me give you a message. People can see you. And now, uh, as we all know, the government watches the things that we do on our Internet. They watch when a Christian goes up on a pornography site. And then if they ever need that 
to use it against that pastor or that Christian, they'll come and say, but you're not a Christian because look at what we have on you, and you will sell out to them. So it's not in secret places that you're sinning. You're sinning in public places, and the devil knows how to uncover you if he ever has to. So you better repent from that, and you better ask Jesus to protect you from that. Because we're living in the days where the devil is tracking down Christians all over the world. And it's only a matter of time if Jesus tarries before it will be happening here in our country too. So pornography in 1 John 2, 15, 16. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that are that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Now, uh, Bishop Conco told us whenever we first met him that down in the city under the sea, Uh, that they actually manufacture things under the sea. And he said they manufacture things under the sea before they ever appear up on land. He said he saw a computer under the sea before he ever saw one up on land. But when they were under the sea, they were given computers and they were shown how to operate the computers and he he and other people that I, I've ministered to several women that were under the sea over the years that were former witches and several uh, witches wizards that were under the sea since I wrote the book called Witch Doctor and the Man, uh, under the, the City Under the Sea. And you can find that book up on uh, Amazon.com. And it's um, Kindle Books, Pat Holiday. Now, uh, let me just stop here for a minute and just tell you that uh, the monies that we get from our books, the, the books that I make, go right into the ministry. Uh, they don't go to me personally, uh, although I could change it and put it to me personally. But it's been a resource to help us in the ministry over the years, and uh, so um, just to, uh, so that you know. But now, the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life, the Lord, it's okay for you to have things, but it's not okay if you love those things more than you love Jesus. Amen. So the uh, cage, as we see, they come, they cage the mind. Now, over the years, I've grown as I've taught. And you all know that I did some, uh, I've done some deliverances in the realms of schizophrenia. And uh, so uh, going in the seminary and teaching in the seminary for eight years, uh, the seminary in the state of Florida has to teach on psychology. Uh, otherwise, they cannot get accredited. So I am a Ph.D. in the seminary in uh, Florida. I also have one in Georgia through my brother's seminary. But the one in Florida is not accredited. And so... Um, I just said, I will not take any psychology courses because it's up the devil. And I told uh, I told uh, Dr. Vavoni, who was head of Southeastern Theological Seminary that I graduated from, I told him, I said, um, uh, psychology comes directly from a man called Freud and another man called Young, and you spell his name J U N G. Freud was a man that believed every 
problem that you have is based on sexual problems. Uh, and he called it uh, Oedipus. And the spirit of Oedipus, he said, was that you always desired to have sex with your mother. So you had Oedipus spirit. Or you had an Oedipus complex is what he called it. We call it an Oedipus spirit is what we would call it. And so then um, uh, Young, who was his good friend, they were working, developing this new so-called science together. And Young believed in the supernatural. And he had a spirit guide called Philemon, P-H. Philemon uh, was his spirit guide that drew him in to speak into devil and them giving him answers. And so his type of psychology, Young's type, is called parapsychology. And the other, uh, Freud's is called psychology or psychiatry. But the whole science was developed in that manner. Uh, was those two uh, speaking together and comparing notes together. Freud never believed in the supernatural, but uh, Jung did. So knowing all of these things, I knew that if I got into that pool and I started studying their things, I would end up with my mind controlled and my mind blinded by blinding spirits concerning that situation. So I refused to take the courses, and I did research, just like I do for you people on Blog Talk, and I went and found out the things that I just told you, and I found out uh, how they were so-called healing the people. And the way they were healing the people, they were just simply using hypnosis uh, or the psychiatrists use uh, psychotropic drugs. And so that's what the difference is in a psychiatrist, psychologist, and a deliverance minister that doesn't take you into psychology and psychiatry. And I just happen to be one of them that will not. There are others that will And I can tell you that they usually go by the name of inner healers and they call it uh, psychic today. I haven't looked at it in a long time. But if somebody wants to take you back to your childhood and have you to visualize your dead father or visualize your dead mother and forgive them after they've been dead, and uh, uh, visualize the uh, boyfriend that you had sex with years ago and for you to forgive that person. Uh, That is called Christian psychology, and you don't want to have any part of that. And the other thing is the visualization is just, it's really, what it is is it's hypnosis. And they discovered that they could put you in a hypnotic trance and then they can take you through your life uh, through visualization of your life. Now, some of your worldly psychiatrists and psychologists, they don't know whether those spirits that appear or those visions that appear are are coming from, uh, from uh, where they're coming from, in other words. So you don't want anybody to play around with your mind because your mind is the most important thing that God has given to you because your mind is the yes and no door to eternity. So if you let somebody come in and play around with your mind, you could get bewitched like Paul talks about in Galatians chapter 4. And so now if you have been... um, a person that went into the New Age movement and you went into uh, things like called I Am is one of them. There's many different call names. They're called uh, names of the New Age movement uh, and it's New Age. There are Christian New Age ministers. 
And these Christians that are inviting people to swing is what I would call a new age Christian. That they're not they're not basing the, what they do on the Word of God. They're basing it on psychology, on their own sin life and rebellion. So you have to be very prayerful about where you go, who you let pray for you, and you've got to really and truthfully be very careful not to let people uh, get a hold of your mind. And you do that when you go into a meeting before you go through the door. You say, Lord, I cover my mind with the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the wall of fire that's around me. And you are protected. You say, I forbid any devil from speaking to me or touching me. And you go into that meeting and you will be protected. The demons won't come around you because Jesus is strong enough to protect you. Amen. Now, if you are a person that um, that you have uh, uh, been in the past wicked and you've never gotten any deliverance, you're going to need deliverance. I'm just going to tell you the truth. If you go to the church faithfully every Sunday, if you pay your tithe every Sunday, but you've never been through deliverance, true deliverance, you're going to need deliverance because I believe that what's wrong with the Christian church today is the fact that people are being received into the Christian church and they've bypassed the deliverance part of their ministry and to come in and those devils are wedged in their flesh and and they are driven either by sickness or by uh, devils of lust and the things we've talked about or doubt and unbelief and all ungodly things. And they cannot help it because the pastor has never set the captives free. But if you've heard this message tonight, and you don't want to call because you're embarrassed or you think that you're okay, well, that will be on your head. My spirit will be cleansed because I've told you about these things tonight. Now, in Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, it says, Behold, now there is an accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation today is the day of salvation and you see salvation will save you from yourself it will save you from your family lines of devil it will save you from your adultery and fornication and all that stuff that you bogged down in it will save you from the bondages of devil and it will save you from the cages that the devil will put on your mind. Now, real quickly, I just want to explain why I went into the psychiatry. The psychologist and the psychiatrist know what they're doing whenever they hypnotize somebody. And now I know some of this stuff because I used to date a psychologist for many years. So I used to hear them talk, and I know what they do. I know what they believe. And they know what what hypnosis does. They know that it puts them in, the person in a trance. They know that they can go in and control that person's mind. And what they do is they hypnotize the person. The person goes into trance. They will uh, open up. A, a spirit will come in, the spirit of fear, will come in and open up the subconscious mind of that person. And the subconscious mind of that person is the memory bank of that person, actually. Everything that you've ever done is in that subconscious mind. And what happens is that uh, the, the spirit of doorway into that subconscious mind. And the handler will manipulate the subconscious mind uh, while the person's in the trance. 
and they will layer devils into those minds. They will layer. Uh, by the way, uh, if uh, if a wizard or a government agent uh, gets control of your mind, they have to make you go through a trauma before, and the trauma scatters your mind, shatters your mind into many different little pieces in your subconscious mind. And then what happens is the um, controller can then minister uh, demons to come into the subconscious mind, into those empty places, and control your conscious mind. So that's the whole problem. Now, your conscious mind, part of you that God gave you, that says, I will not sin, that's wrong, or I will sin, I know that's wrong, but I'm going to do it anyway. So it's that part of your mind that you make choices. So that's why you have to guard your mind, and you have to guard your mind with with uh, the Word of God. You have to guard your mind by not concentrating on the devil. Uh, a lot of people have a hard time getting free because they're looking at what the devils do to them instead of just binding the devil and then getting their mind on Jesus and praising him and telling him, thank you for helping me with this problem. In other words, if you zero in on the devil and you keep your mind going on the devil, then what's going to happen is the devil is going to control your mind. You know that scripture that says, give no place to the devil. You give no place in your mind to the devil. Now, in Revelation 18.2, it says, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean, hateful bird. So, I'm going to pray with you for a minute, because some of you have done these things ignorantly, and some of you want to be free. So, I'm, I'm going to pray with you just for a few minutes, and then... We're going to open up the phone lines. I want you to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I loose, I loose into myself and into the family of God, lo, uh, uh, warring angels of God, to fight our battles in the heavenlies. Let them guard us from Satan and all of his hosts who have us believing and agreeing with lies. We bind all deception within us and prevent any more from getting through to us as the Lord ministers to our need. I thank you, Father. I thank you that you're able to loosen my mind from Satan's captivity. I break all of his powers over my mind in Jesus' name. I command every spirit of fear to be bound, every spirit of mind control to be bound, every spirit of Leviathan and uh, the octopus spirit to be bound. I cut off all of their legs into my body in the name of Jesus. They are powerless from this moment on in Jesus' name. I blind their eyes that they cannot see. I blind their ears that they cannot hear. And I command them to let loose of my subconscious mind in the name of Jesus. I bind all of the spirits that have been layered in my mind through people that know and through people that don't know, but yet they're, they're people that 
I have submitted to. I bind up the reprobate mind. Now, Father, I confess to you all of my sexual sins. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive me for these things, God. And I'm just going to call them out. And you just take deep breaths and cough them out. Uh, Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, cough, cough them out, maliciousness, Full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignancy, whispers, backbiters, ha- uh, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, uh, inventors of evil things, disobedience. I'm grown now and I ask you to forgive me for being disobedient to my parents because I was being hateful, and any other sin against my parents, I ask you to put it under your blood and just forgive me today in Jesus' name. Without natural affections, any sin that I've done that is perverse, pornography, I renounce you in the name of Jesus. You have no power over my soul. I renounce masturbation all unnatural sex, I command these spirits right now that you are bound. You are not going to keep me from the entering into the kingdom of God. I bind deceived every spirit of deception. Every time I've ever been deceived, I bind you. I disconnect myself from any handlers, any witches, warlocks, any family members that control my life, I bind all deceptions in the name of Jesus. And I bind all fornications that I've ever done, uh, any idolatry that I've ever done, adultery, any effeminate spirit, lesbianism, homosexuality. I bind you up. And you have absolutely no power over me from this day forward. And, Father God, I give you glory. I give you praise that you're able to totally deliver me. I take authority over uncleanliness, witchcraft, hatred, variance, inventions, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murderers, murders. If you've ever committed an abortion, If you've ever been someone that has urged your girlfriend to commit adultery or or an abortion, just say, I'm sorry, Lord, do forgive me. And now just cough out those murdering devils. Drunkenness, reveling, and uh, all of the spirits named, all of the spirits not named. And we bind you, Leviathan, and we cut your seven legs off. We command you to leave. And we bind all of these spirits to you. And you just take off right now. Come out. The whole group, come out. In the name of Jesus. Every single one, come up and out. Now, you spirit of the octopus, you're a world mind controller. And I've taught our people about this several weeks ago, about your world mind control. And you both are water spirits. And we disconnect ourselves from water spirits. And we dry all your water up in our bodies that you use. Bind up that octopus spirit and break the powers over our minds of these spirits. And we command you that all of these spirits that we've called out and any hiding spirit come out and we bind them to you. And we command you to come out of us now, right now. Come out, octopus spirits, come out. And you religious spirits, which is kundalini spirits, that are operating down in our spines. You're a snake cobra spirit. We cut your head off and we cut your tails off of Leviathan, uh, of um, the the snake spirits in the stomach, uh, all of those poisonous spirits that live in the stomach. We cut your heads and tails off. And we also cut the head off of uh, Pythodivinating Spirit that crushes our finances, 
crushes our wealth, uh, crushes everything that we do. And we cut your tail and heads off, and we command that you all come up and out and get into the cage. Now just take deep breaths and cough them out. Everyone, come up and out. Everyone, come up and out. The Word of God tells us that you must obey. You must obey. Now, Father, we just lift our hands up and we ask that you baptize us with the Holy Spirit and fire and fill all of those empty places with your Spirit, Holy Ghost, and drive out any hidden spirits. And, Father, we close the door now to every spirit that came to rob, steal, and kill. But you said, Jesus, that you came to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. And you also said, Whosoever the Son of Man shall set free shall be free indeed. We thank you tonight. We glorify your name. We praise you for setting us free. And everybody says, Marshall. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen indeed. Calls, but I'm sure you must have something to add to all of that. Wow. wow. Praise the Lord. Uh, it's, yes. it's, it's, ama- it's amazing, Pat, how the enemy comes to try and steal things that, that the Lord is trying to teach us, but he's He's slick. He's he's been at this for thousands of years. He knows what he's doing. He he's good at deceiving people. I mean, he is you yeah. know, amazing. You know, I know you talked about the uh, octopus spirit before, but it it seemed to recede into my memory. It's amazing when you brought it up. I was like, oh yeah, that's right. So thank yeah, you for we, your. Uh, you know, we brought it up in a different context bringing it up as a world power and that's the world power and I was getting you to see that it was a water spirit that was controlling the world but now this is another piece of the puzzle that shows you how it operates in one person's life you see yeah so that's uh, the Bible tells us that we learn here a little there a little so each little piece I'm still learning things myself every day. And so I expect our people to learn things too, right? (laughs) Amen. Well, well, the Lord tarries. I think it's a good thing, a very good thing. I I do do want to share uh, two scriptures. Go ahead. um, That, um, you know, I come across people and they say, sure, I'm a Christian, but, but, you know, what's wrong with a little premarital sex, you know? And yeah. uh, it, it's it's just amazing, but of course they don't read the word very often. Or if they go to church, they go to one of these third wave churches, and somehow they they don't get it. But anyway, in First Thessalonians four three, you know they say they want to do the will of God. Well, here's a really good example: First Thessalonians four three. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should do what you should abstain from fornication. And fornication is any kind of sex outside of marriage. So, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, that's really, really clear. And then in Ephesians 5, starting in verse 3, it says, But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saint. So if we call ourselves or we think the Lord is calling us a saint, you know, uh, been sanctified by the Lord, if, if, if we belong to Jesus, it says it's not supposed to be named once, not only fornication, but any unclean spirit, any spirit of covetousness, and that's something that's really kind of amazing. Neither filthiness, the next verse, uh, nor foolishness, nor foolish, excuse me, nor foolish talking, nor jesting. And I've been in some churches where they thought that was all right. Um, jesting, uh, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For you know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, or covetous person, who is an idolater. You know, I never thought that covetousness was idolatry, but I guess it is. For a covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of God. I remember reading that in Ephesians 5, 5, once, and I was like, oh, I didn't know covetousness could end us, you know, land us in hell, because almost all of the commercials on television or, com- or magazines or whatever, they're trying to get you to want 
something. I have to have that whatever it is, motorcycle. I have to have that new dress. I have to have that whatever it is, that new iPhone. or they think I can't live without whatever it is. But, you know, having food and raiment, let's be there with content. And the ultimate food is the Word of God. And the ultimate raiment is put on the Lord Jesus Christ because he's our food and he's our raiment. And we ought to be pretty content with him. And then everything else, he'll take care of it. Um, he knows what we have need of before we even ask. So um, I'm just talking to myself more than anybody else. But but it's anyway, I just wanted to add those couple of verses because I thought you know, the ones you gave are excellent. Uh, the one in, in uh, Galatians 5:19 and following. And, I mean, there's so many places in the Scripture they give these lists, but you don't hear them preached on in church very often. Yeah, they never preach on this stuff. Nope. And you know why? Part of the modern reasons why is because uh, of uh, uh, of the uh, new uh, doctrines that have been put into the church by the new wave and uh, purpose-driven Rick Warren. Uh, they're mm-hmm. told not to preach on sin. Hmm. And uh, they say, if you want to build a big church, don't preach on sin. Uh, and have entertainment, and don't um, you know change change it from a church atmosphere to make the church look more like a civic place. And in some of the churches that are into the uh, into the what they call ecstasy dancing, uh, they are, have made their churches to look like nightclubs. And they've got the strobe lights flashing, and it's real dark in there, and everything. I've I've done some articles on that stuff, and it's it's just amazing uh, what uh, Satan is doing in the name of Christianity. And some people that have sit in the churches for years are just sitting there like nothing is going on. Some people have left, like you did, but other people haven't, you know. So let me get the number out. It's 805-292-0300. Now, you know, if you got deliverance tonight, the Bible says, and they overcame by the uh, the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And so when you testify that you got free, it gives you a stronger position in the Lord to keep your position of deliverance because you're telling the world, I got free, Jesus delivered me, and I'm uh, the Lord is making me strong. So you want to take some calls, Brother Marshall? Amen. With the help of the Lord, we can do all things. I'm Thank you, let's Jesus. Get to the first call. Okay. It's 252. You're on the air. Hello. I'm up. I was calling to um, request um, prayer. I applied for a position at um, work at my job. I'm a temporary employee now, and um, I was I received an offer letter today, but it's contingent upon my background check. Um, and I do have something in my background. It was a worthless check charge. Um, I moved in the place they couldn't get in contact with me. But anyway, um, all fines have been paid. It was back in the year 2000. It's the only thing that's on my background check. And this job is for a pharmaceutical company. And I'm not sure if this will hinder me um, or if this will cause them to rescind their offer. So, um, How far back was it? I'm sorry? How far back was this? This was uh, 14 years ago. It was back in the year 2000. Well, Marshall, I think we need to pray that the Lord will hide that for her and erase it off of the computers. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you know this this uh, woman's heart. You know this saint's heart, Lord. And we ask you, Lord, you said, Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We ask you to provide the right job and give her a clear conscience about everything that she's doing and going to be doing, Lord. We know that we've all messed up in the past, but you said, Father, that if we confess our sins, that you're faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And you said, confess your faults one to another, that you may be healed, you may be restored. So, Lord, you want this woman to be 
not just healed emotionally or whatever, but to fully restore to all that you have for all the plans that the Lord Jesus has for her from before the foundation of plans for her peace and not for evil, to give her hope, to give her an expected end, Father, to give her that cord, because you're at the other end of our faith, Lord Jesus. We ask you to provide for her, Lord, all that she needs, and if, if there is anything that needs to be hidden from the enemy, Father, you said you don't remember the sins that we've done. You said you remove them as far as the east is from the west over in Psalm 103. So all we have to do is confess our sins, and as far as you're concerned, it's done. So we ask that your perspective be manifest in the natural realm for this saint, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you pr- provide for her all that she needs, and that you'll keep her, and you'll, you'll provide the job that you're, you want her to have in Jesus' name. And if you have a better job for her down the road, Lord, we ask you to provide that as well. And we ask that you give her the opportunity to give you the praise and the glory for all that you're going to do in Jesus' name, because you are worthy of our praise, Lord, and we're in agreement in Jesus' name, according to Matthew 18, 19. Amen. Amen. Thank you for calling, Amen. and we expect your testimony, okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. God bless you. Okay, we'll take this next call. And it's 281, you're on the air. Hello, Dr. Pat. Hello, Marshall. This is Janice Lehman. Hey, how okay. are you? I'm good. I'm good. That's right. Except <laughs> I have a, a, a knee, a bad knee that I'm not able to walk on. It just keeps getting more um, worse. So I, I just need prayer for my knee so I can walk. So okay. I can go to work tomorrow. Okay, uh, I know that uh, Marshall's faith is real high right now, so he's going to pray that God heals you. And by the way, if you're calling in and you don't push one, we won't answer the phone. So if you want us to talk, when you call that number, uh, 805-292-0300, uh, push a one when the uh, man tells you to push the one. Go ahead, Marshall. Pray for this lady's knee. Now, d- just pray along with me, just for starters, okay? Okay. Because I, d- I, I don't know you, but the Lord knows everything about you, okay? So just say, Father yes. God. Father God. I repent of all sins for me and my generations. I repent of all sins for me and my generations. Including feet running to mischief in the past. Including? Feet what was running that? to mischief. Feet running to mischief in the yeah, past. It's in the past. So please forgive me and deliver me. Please forgive me and deliver me. Cancel the curses in Jesus' name. Cancel the curses in Jesus' name. Amen. And Amen. I'm in agreement too, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace and your compassions that are new every day. It says over in Ephesians 5.30, Lord Jesus, that we're bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh. It says death hath no more dominion over you. And since death has no more dominion over you, you have the power of an endless life, as it is written in Romans 6, 9. You have the power of an endless life. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that you're not sick anymore. You are already bruised. It is written, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace that brings us shalom. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. You know, sister, it says healing and deliverance is the children's bread. If you read Mark um, 7:27, it talks about Jesus says healing, but they're also talking about deliverance for this uh, Syrophoenician woman's daughter. So that's it's it's a given. That's what he wants for his children. Healing and deliverance is the children's bread. So, Father, Jesus simply said, "Whatever you ask in my name," and I'm asking in that name, the name above all names, because of the blood of the covenant. Jesus said, whatever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Father, I ask you to give this woman, if she needs two, two, but at least one new knee, brand new knee, that, that she'll be able to run and leap and, and jump and praise the Lord because we have a better covenant founded upon better promises. And, Lord, we, we know that that is what you do. And we thank you. It's because of that name, the name above all names, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. So, sister, do something you couldn't do before and praise the Lord and call us back with your praise testimony in Jesus' name. Because, you know, and I I encourage you, I encourage you to find the healing scriptures and thank the Lord for them. Thank the Lord for Matthew, uh, where is it, 8, 17, 16, 17. 
that he took all of our infirmities and bore all of our sicknesses. And every spirit of pain and trauma, I bind you and I cancel your assignment to the sister. I command you to rent nothing, harm no one on the way. Loose! And go where Jesus Christ of Nazareth tells you to go and never return and harming nothing on the way. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I'm, I, want to, I should have asked you earlier, but did you injure this knee at some time? Um, no, not, I don't think I've injured it. I'm just on my feet a lot, and I, and I just have, and I'm overweight, and I just have this knee problem every so often. It, it when I'm overusing it, it pops up and happens. Okay, and um, I, I would really encourage you to uh, uh, ask the Lord, ask the Holy Spirit. You know, ask the Father in Jesus' name to have the Holy Spirit show you all those scriptures about how much the Lord loves you, okay? Because, okay. you know, um, sometimes we are we are spirit beings because we're created in God's image, and God is the Spirit. God the Father is the Spirit, right? And they that worship right. Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Well, if we're a spirit being, we need spiritual food. Not We need physical food, of course, but we need spiritual food. But one of the most awesome, you know, maybe not you, but for me, when I grew up, I had people telling me, you're not as good as so-and-so, you're not as smart as so-and-so, you're not as whatever. This, you know, All this comparison, they said, he that compares themselves among themselves is not wise. So that wasn't a very good thing for them to do, but doing the best they knew how. So I forgive them. But we need to find out what God thinks about each one of us. He says, I've loved you with an everlasting love in Jeremiah 31.3. He says, I've engraved your name in the palms of my hand over in, where is that, Isaiah... Help me, Lord. I think it's something forty nine sixteen, something like that. And it says that he keeps us as the apple of of his eye. That's in several places, but one of them is in in Deuteronomy. Oh, I think it was thirty two ten, something like that. But anyway, there's a lot of these wonderful scriptures, and one of the ones I find really really powerful is in First John four ten. Herein is love, not that we love God but that he loved us, he loved you, sister, and sent his son to be the propitiation for your sins, to be the substitute and sacrifice for your sins, whom God set forth a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. So, sister, Pat has done a wonderful teaching to help people with their weight. Um, You can go back on the archives from Blog Talk Radio, and, and I would suggest you do that. You listen to that. She may have even written a book. I don't remember right now, but I know she's she's taught on it several times. And um, but but for me, the main thing is is to find out the spiritual food that we need about how much He loves us. Because if if we feed on that, we're not going to be quite as inclined to go to the other things that aren't as ideal for us. Because you know the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And one of the ways he does that sometimes is through subtle little things, but not that having a piece of something sweet now and then isn't a good thing. It is. It's fine. It even says uh, we're supposed to offer the sweet cane to the Lord or whatever, and we're the temple of the Holy Spirit, so it's fine, but but in moderation. And that's one of the gifts of the Spirit. Um, so you can ask for the Holy Spirit to help you, and that'll take a little load off of your knee, too, and the natural. But anyway, I, you may want to look up the, the teaching Pat did, and that should help your knee, too. But um, your new knee. Thank you, Lord, for yes. giving her a new knee in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. What, Thank what you all. need to do? Hello. What yes, I want I'm you here. to do is I want you to take a deep breath and call out any spirits that are causing the knee problem and the weight problem in Jesus' name. We bind those weight spirits <laughs> and any kind of infirm spirits. And we command that you loose her totally from her head to her feet. You let her free. You let that knee free. We bind up all inflammation in the knee. We bind up every self-curse that spoke those words in the name of Jesus. And that uh, Marshall's prayer uh, surrounds that knee and totally delivers and heals that knee because by his stripes she's healed. Now take a deep breath and just fill with the with the spirit of the Lord. That's wrong. And call us back with a testimony, okay? Okay, I will. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Let's try 212. 212, you're Hello. on the air. Hello. Hello. 
Hello? Go ahead and speak. We can hear you. Oh, okay. I was listening. Hello, Dr. Pat and um, Marshall. My name is Judy. I spoke to you about a month ago about my daughter that was thinking about having an abortion and my son that had a mental illness and you know, prayed for me. Well, what? I just called to give you a praise testimony that my what? daughter is going to have the baby and she's not going to have the abortion. Praise the Lord. No. Thank, Thank you. you. That's so a I just... Yes, and I just want to thank you so much. And it was uh, something else I wanted to um, tell you. You were talking, well, I was listening to one of your videos about spiritual house cleaning, Mm -hmm. and I prayed to the Lord, and I asked him, you know, to show me the things that's in my house that I need to get out and to destroy and mm-hmm. the other day I was on YouTube and this video, it was a video about Disney and all these um, videos that they have um, demonic messages in them. And so I have a whole bunch of Disney videos for kids. So... I'm throwing them out. I'm not throwing them out. I'm going to destroy them, you know, and then throw them out like you're said to do. But um, yeah. I don't know. A lot of people are not aware of um, how demonic Disney is. Well, that's true. That's mm-hmm. true. So you got, you got, see, the Lord opened your ears so that you could, that you could properly hear that message. That's great. Yeah. We mm-hmm. thank you for that testimony, God. So okay, Brother Mark, you're welcome. Can we say a prayer for this lady? We thank you, Lord, for her uh, overcoming the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of her testimony. We thank you, Lord, for giving her uh, faith and discernment and, and the gifts that you've given her, Lord. We thank you for the answered prayer for her daughter. We ask you to bless her grandchild, we cancel the bastard's curse on that child in Jesus' name, if that's appropriate, in Jesus' name, because Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for cursed is every man that hangeth on the tree. As it thank, thank you, Jesus, for taking that curse <clears throat> for that family and, and removing that from them. And, Father, because you removed the curse, and you said, believe in the Lord Jesus, and you'll be saved, so that is, sozo, and your household saved, he'll be delivered, preserved, and made whole, Father, every spirit of insanity coming against her son is bound, caged, and chained in Jesus' name. Father, we ask you to send the Holy Spirit to minister to him, send the proper people across his path in the perfect time, Lord, that he will know that he is perfectly loved, that he can come into that one mind that we all need to have, the one mind of knowing how much how much the Lord thinks about each one of us, that he's thinking about each one of us as the grains of sand every day, that he, he he's he's keeping us that all things hold together in Jesus Christ, including our minds. So we ask you to restore his mind, restore his soul. You said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We ask you to restore his mind, even even as you, as, as the poor, per, the, the, well, not poor necessarily, people might think of poor, but the, the unfortunate person, <clears throat> the story of the so-called Good Samaritan, the person that was beaten up and, and left for, you know, for dead or whatever, that the Good Samaritan came along to help, said he poured in oil, and wine. So we thank you, Lord, for pouring in the oil of your spirit to change this young man's heart and mind, Father God, and pouring in uh, your your very life, your blood, the wine that represents the blood of God, that represents the blood of the Lord Jesus, to make him every whit whole, to know that he is perfectly loved in Jesus' name. As you said, perfect love casts out all fear, and every spirit of ungodly fear we bind and cage you. Every spirit of insanity we bind and cage you. We cancel your assignment to this young man to this woman's son in Jesus' name. Father, we ask you to minister to him by your good spirit, the comforter, to comfort him and lead him in the way you want him to go, that he will be changed from glory to glory, that you will restore his mind and his heart in Jesus' name. And we're all in agreement because you said if two of you on earth agree as touching anything you ask, it shall be done for my Father which is in heaven. And you cannot lie, for all the promises are always yes and amen in Christ Jesus. And we give you the praise and honor and glory, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank Amen. You.
Thank you for Thank the testimony. You. God bless you. Oh, okay. God bless you okay. also. Amen. That was so sweet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. 972, you're on the air. Well, I plugged you in, but let me try it again. 972, you're Hello? on the air. I can hear you. Okay. Um, I prayed that prayer of uh, deliverance tonight. And um, there were several days this week when the Lord just brought to my remembrance some of the things that I <clears throat> have been involved in as far as uh, a lot of um, fornication and adulterous affairs in the past that I, you know, thought I had repented from, but it would just, like, come up for hours. He would just bring to my remembrance the things that I had done, and I asked him to forgive me, and that just happened, like, within the last two, three days. And oh. um, I, what's been bothering me is the that probably I got just a boatload of curses with that, you know, sicknesses and things that I probably would not have had otherwise. Mm-hmm. And I find it really, really hard to believe God for healing. I, I don't know why that is. I would just beat myself up over it. Um, but I've had really very serious sicknesses, and I would do everything that I knew to do. I'd fast, I'd pray, I'd stay up nights, I'd drive myself crazy and make myself a lot sicker because I wouldn't allow myself to have the rest I needed. I would just be driven to do all these things to get God to, uh, I guess, accept of me and heal me. And then I ended up going to the doctors anyways. So I've got some things going on now, and I was thinking, well, maybe the reason I've had such a hard time believing is because of that I've had sex with so many people in the in the past, and I got all these curses working. And not only did it affect me and my mental health and my emotional and physical health, but my daughter, she went into lesbianism. She first was um, a hardcore drug addict and got herself um, detoxed twice, but very hardcore. And she ended up in a facility where they did, like, CIA-style mind control on these kids. Mm -hmm. And I think in that facility is where she became um, a lesbian. And she was hiding it from me for years and years. And... Mm -hmm. um, so she's been living with women, and um, a couple, three, about three years ago, she uh, ended up that she moved and married one of them. So, and yeah. she's very happy. They're very happy. And she knows how I feel about it. She was raised, you know, she became a Christian when she was four years old, and she she really should know better, but she's so overcome with it, she can't get free. Um, and uh, I've been praying for her. And she is very much, her partner is American Indian, and they're very much into um, Indian witchcraft. Mm-hmm. And I see what they're believing because they're putting it all on Facebook. So yeah. deep witchcraft. And every now and then she will ask me, Mom, will you pray for me? And then I'll pray for her. And so they've got this battle going on. She'll be calling on the on on the wolf spirit and all these different spirits to um to help her feel better and take away the afflictions and stuff and at the same time I'll be over here praying and binding the devil in her and loosing the blood of Jesus and the angels of the living God and the the the, the wall of fire so they've got a battle going on over there and anyways I wanted to those are two of the things that I'm really concerned about. My daughter, I don't know, I hope it's not too late for her, but I'm praying for her, and um, whatever thing that I had to do with her going down that path because uh, of my sins and her father's sins, I just want the Lord to do some, you know, some work in my heart to to help me me walk better. And, well, let me tell you something. Uh, yes. Every one of us have gone down these trails of sin, and Jesus is able to punch through the wall of sin in your daughter because you have a promise in Acts two thirty eight thirty nine for you to repent 
and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and he will save you and your household. So what you do is you just continue to pray for her, thank God for her salvation, love her, don't love the sin, love her, and continue to call in and ask for prayer when you need it, and God will save your child in the time that he brings her to the point that she gives up. So you don't worry about it. God is in control. Now, the other thing is, as far as your healing, we've done several teachings on Blog Talk Radio about healing and also about spiritual warfare. And there's another one that's particularly uh, good to build your faith up, and that is New Creations. There's a book up on um, Amazon Kindle, and that's the name of it. It's New Creations. And you get that book, and it shows you who you are because Jesus has delivered you and because he's healed you. And once you understand that once you've repented, that it's over. Now, you may need deliverance, but the sin is forgiven, you're a new creation, and then we start working on you to get you free so that you can enjoy your Christianity. Now, did you listen to tonight's show? Yes, I did. Did you get any deliverance tonight? Well, I coughed when you said to cough, and I was believing, yeah. Well, did you feel anything coming up? Um. Well, I yawned a few times and I coughed, and that's, okay. I really don't know. Well, let's just, let's just make back. sure. Let's just make sure. Satan, okay. I bind all hiding spirits in this woman. She's repented. She's opened up her life to Christ for him to deliver her. And you cannot stop her from receiving deliverance, full deliverance. And all of those prayers that I prayed tonight, I release into her spirit. And, Lord Jesus, we ask that you totally deliver her and set her free. And we take authority over the infirm spirits in her body. And we command that body to start lining up with the word of God for her to be set free totally, body, soul, and spirit. Now take a deep breath and cough all the way down from your stomach. Come out. Every spirit is bound. Every spirit is caged. And we command these spirits to obey the word of God. Come up and out. You can hinder her, all doubt and unbelief, all rebellion. Every spirit that we called out on the show tonight, you have to obey the name of Jesus Christ. You cannot hide. You cannot stay. We cut all the roots. We cut all of the all of the uh uh chains, the fetters, anything that's holding these spirits, we break off all blocking spirits. And we particularly break up the spirit of shame and guilt. And you come out. She's not guilty. She has no shame because Jesus took the shame and guilt on his cross. She's just like a newborn baby, a virgin baby. And you cannot hinder her with her past ever again. We forbid it. And, Father God, we release that new creation over her body and over her mind and over her spirit. And we particularly release over her a hunger for the Word of God to know you in your fullness, in Jesus' name. Come on. Nothing can stay. Every single thing, named or not named, everything, everything. The blood is against you. Now, I want you to say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I repent from all of my sins. I repent from all of my sins. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive me. And I forgive myself. And I forgive myself. And I ask you to sanctify my vessel. And I ask you to sanctify my vessel. Come in and fill me with your Holy Spirit. 
Come in and fill me with your Holy Spirit. And make me whole. And make me whole. And give me the gift of tongues. And give me the gift of tongues. Now just raise your hands and say, thank you, Jesus, and praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, praise come you. in and fill her praise. and sanctify praise. her. Fill all Thank those you, empty places up in her mind and her body and Amen. overflow, God. Just baptize her, Thank Jesus, you. with the Holy Amen. Spirit from her head to her toes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And just open your mouth and let him just speak. Thank you, Jesus. Marshall, Thank you, Lord. you have a scripture for this lady, and we want you to get in the word, read the word, and call us back with further testimony. Marshall? Yes, sister. You can hear me? Yeah. Okay. I can hear you. Uh, they um really important for you and for your daughter. Um, I don't know whether your daughter was conceived in or out of wedlock, so um, you, you know that. But you can deal with this very beautifully with Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. And I would suggest that you, you know, first get them in your mind if you don't already have them from the King James, and then in your heart because they'll drop down those extra couple inches from your head to your heart. Because I've been reciting this out loud for a couple of years now, a couple of times a day, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Well, you know, but sometimes you can hear it and hear it and hear it, and so faith comes by hearing. You know, when you read the Bible, don't read it silently. I mean, if you're in a public place and it would be inappropriate, that's, that's another thing. And in those cases, having earphones and having it on an iPod or something would be nice. But, but, um, but it, 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 you know, of course, reading is better than not reading it. But reading it out loud is the way to go. And so I didn't know for many years. But all of a sudden, it hit me: Christ hath redeemed us. Oh, it's it's He hath done. It's already done. Redeemed. How did He redeem us? You know. And and um, it says over in First uh, Peter, uh, chapter one, verses eighteen and nineteen. For as much as you know, you were not redeemed, that is, purchased back from Satan, you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation, received by tradition of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. So I, I really encourage you uh, to claim the benefits of the fact that he has redeemed you from the curse of the law, and he says, believe in the Lord Jesus, and you'll be sozo, you'll be saved, and your household saved, healed, delivered, preserved, and made whole, and your household that's um, the one that the Pat gave you is in Acts two, thirty-eight and thirty-nine, which is wonderful. Um, but the others are in in Acts sixteen, I think it's thirty-one, something like that. Um, and and there's others, and, and it, you know you receive the gift of righteousness, Romans five seventeen, and it says the seed of the righteous shall be delivered in Proverbs, I think it's eleven twenty-nine. Um, so the seed of the righteous, that your daughter, shall be delivered. He's promising to deliver her. See, his word is forever settled in heaven. And there's lots and lots of scriptures that talk about that, including Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8. Um, uh, there's a whole bunch of scriptures. Uh, even First Peter, I think, yeah, uh, uh, verse 23 and following, uh, confirms that. You know, the word of the Lord is, is, will endure forever in verse 25 of, of First Peter chapter 1. So his word is for sure. That's that's the, the the bedrock of of what we can count on because he wants to hasten his word to perform it like it says in the beginning of Jeremiah. So I really encourage you to to memorize to hide that word of God and get it into your heart that Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. And there's a wonderful scriptures <clears throat> if if you read Leviticus 17:11, which is what the whole covenant's about, that uh, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. That is the soul. That word "life" means the nephesh, and the Hebrew means the, the soul, the actual character, of the person. Jesus' very soul. The life of the flesh is in the blood, and I've given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. It's plural. It's plural. It's not just you. It's everyone that all of your descendants. It's 
your soul, your children. And, and you can look for the scriptures. The Lord will show you where they are. There's a bunch of them, and it's awesome. I love the, the, the last verse of Isaiah 59. You look that up later. Isaiah chapter 59, the last verse. And also Isaiah, I think it's 49, toward the end of the chapter. You know, uh, he's going to contend with him that contendeth with thee and save your children. He promises to do that. So you call him in remembrance of his promises, and it's a done deal. And it's, it's about staying in faith. And, you know, the enemy comes to bring con, um, condemnation, but the Holy Spirit comes to bring conviction. And there's a distinction there. And it's good to be convicted so that you can repent, and then you're free of it. You're clean by the word he's spoken to you. But we claim the promises of, in Galatians 3.13 and 14, not only for this woman, but for her daughter, Lord, because you said Jesus hath redeemed us from the curse of the law because he hung on that tree. He took our cup of curses. You receive his cup of blessings. So all the curses are canceled, coming down on you and on your daughter in Jesus' name. We do decree it and declare it as joint heirs with Christ in Jesus' name. And and enjoy, enjoy his word, because his word is awesome. His word is real food. It's genuine food. He will nourish your spirit woman on the inside. It's awesome. Enjoy him. Uh, honey, was your daughter born in Red Hawk? Uh, she was, but her her dad was a sexual pervert. Oh, okay. Yeah, there and, was nothing holy about that marriage. Okay. What about um, abortions? Did you ever have any? No. Okay. Well, Father, we bind the sins of the Father for coming down on this daughter in Jesus' name. We bind all of those devils over this uh, over this uh, daughter of uh, perversions and all of those spirits that we called out of the mother tonight. We bind them over her. And we ask you, God, for the witchcraft that she's involved in. We ask, God, that you make these things visible for her and place fear on her, Lord, a godly fear. And, Lord, uh, do whatever you have to do to bring her into the kingdom. But, Satan, we bind you from touching her body or hurting her in any way. And we surround her with warring angels. And we give you the glory, God, that you will put a sort of contention between her and that girl. And, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray this same prayer for that girl that she's living with. And we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, for her soul. Amen. Call us back and get in the Word and recast this program, okay? And call us some more. Okay, honey. We'll hear you next week. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. We've got three, three, six is on the air. Hello, Pastor Pat. Um, Brother Marshall, I've uh, received... Uh, multiple layers of deliverance in the last uh, year. Uh, I think it's been about nine months since I've been coming up and listening and uh, reading and um, being in agreement with the prayers that uh, have been going out. Um, I'm so thankful and that God is uh, still... Uh, cares uh he still has compassion for those that that have a, a desire to continue in the faith I'm, I'm thankful that uh i was reading about david um how he was uh conceived in iniquity and um how iniquity causes uh, uh you know so many different uh, levels of demons to come in uh i think uh mine started at uh, at a, a real early age, probably about the age of eight, um, I was uh, uh, found myself doing things that uh, you know I'm not not uh, proud of today. But that's in the past. That's under the blood. But <clears throat> needless to say, um, I'm becoming more freer. Um, I am. Uh, uh, Coming more liberated, um, it's almost like the layers of uh, my sinful nature. The flesh is uh, dying, uh, 
and God is um, uh, resurrecting his uh, power and his ability to uh, not only cover all of my sins, my past, my present, my future, but uh, uh, he's, uh, he's on the throne and he's well able to do exceedingly abundantly above whatever we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Um, <clears throat> I was uh, <clears throat> praying the scriptures the other morning and um, I was going through Psalms 23 uh, praying the scriptures out loud, uh, as I do sometimes. Um, and I literally, I don't know if this this was a supernatural act of God. I turned my back as, I, as soon as I prayed, finished praying the Psalms uh, 23, and I stood and I began to, to worship the Lord. Uh, my Bible was sitting on the, on the end of the bed, <clears throat> And I heard the page turn, uh, one of the pages turn, literally turn, I turned, and I seen that uh, it turned over uh, a page uh, to t- Psalms 27, and the Lord began to show me and illuminate that uh, Psalms 27 about the song, uh, a David song of confidence. And um, the last verse of that uh, scripture uh, which is 14 of uh, Psalms 27, says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So that was all that I need to do. That's all I need to know to do now, for now, and just be obedient uh, to what uh, the Lord is showing me. Uh, be um, quick to, to repent uh, be wise as a serpent, gentle as a dove. Stay on uh, the uh, defensive side, also the offensive side, and uh, keep an eye and keep a watch out for um, my soul, and uh, and keep a uh, reverence, uh, a reverential fear in my heart toward uh, God. <clears throat> and as I'm uh, Doing that, it's it's um, becoming more freer in Christ, and uh, uh, something I'm not understanding a whole lot. But it's not for me to try to understand at this point. All He's telling me to do is just wait on the Lord and be of good courage. He He shall strengthen my heart. And if He says again, He says again, wait. Then there's something in that waiting period that, that he's wanting to, to reveal to me uh, for his glory and, and for not only the, the body of Christ, but for the, my family and so on and so on. Um, so obedience, <clears throat> I'm finding out, is, is better than sacrifice. And now I have <clears throat> substance to sacrifice, which is a sacrifice of, of praise to God. Uh, that's what faith I'm understanding more clearly is it's the substance of things hoped for and um, his word clearly indicates that um, this in my life that that I'm right where I need to be right now and if I'll just continue in the faith stay faithful for God um, he's just in uh, in all of his ways to to meet our needs as we seek to live according to his word his purpose his plan Amen. That's a good testimony. Yes. Well, uh, do you need any prayer before I go to the next call? <clears throat> yes, ma'am. We can um, 14 just, minutes. Um, okay, just Father, it's, um, <clears throat> I find there's a lot of, not only just when I come up here, but during the week I'm receiving uh, deliverance as well. There's periods a lot, and that the Lord just continue to to um, to uh, show me um, the way, His way. Okay, Brother Marshall, mm-hmm. we got about uh, thirteen okay. minutes and another call. Father, we're in agreement with our brother. Um, he's he's looking to continue with you, Lord, 
and be strengthened in, in, in that relationship, Lord, and we ask you to help him, help him along the way. And we know that, that you do that. We, we know, Lord, that, that you want us to seek you, Lord. You say that they that know your name will put their trust in you. You have not forsaken them that seek you. You want all of us to seek you. It's not a passive relationship. It's, it's like a love relationship of a, of, a, of a woman and a man that want to spend time together. That it's not a forced thing. It's, it's a desire of the heart, Lord. So we ask you to give him the desires of his heart as you give him those desires, Father. We have a more intimate relationship with you that, that as a good son, that, that he's learning how to be more, and progressively all of us, learning to be more and more obedient, even as he, as he said, obedience is better than sacrifice. And we thank you for showing him the, the scripture at the end of, of Psalm 27. We ask you to continue to open his eyes. They may see wondrous things out of your word, Lord, and continue to give him a hunger and a thirst for righteousness, that it will be filled more and more, and we're all in agreement in Jesus' name. And, and brother, before you go, I just want to share one little thing that the Lord has showed me, because I came across that too. It's also at the end of Isaiah, the last verse of Isaiah 40. It says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And I looked that up, and the word there, wait, in the Hebrew is kava. It means to bind together a forward look with assurance. In other words, that we're bound together in his love, and we're looking forward to what he has for each one of us individually. And think about Rahab, and there she was in harm's way, right on the walls of Jericho, but she had that red rope hanging out her window, and that's what she's looking at. And Jesus is at the other end of our faith. Amen, brother? Amen. 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 Thank you, Darren. Amen. We'll talk to you Wednesday. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. God bless you. And we have uh, 972. Hello. Nine seven two. Hello. Hello. Yeah, you just talked to me. Uh, you must have um, plucked me back I, in. Okay. Well, I'm glad I talked to you again. Be blessed uh-huh. over the weekend. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. Okay. My bless. Bye. Well, you know, Marshall, when I take a call, it jumps up into the spot right underneath you, and so that's why sometimes I double double click. Well, that's all the hands that we have up tonight, and so um, Brother Marshall's going to, let's see, we've got about 10 minutes and 16 minutes in prayer, I mean 16 seconds, and so uh, we do need to continue to pray for the condition of the um, wars going on all over the world and the persecuted Christians and the people listening to the broadcast. And so, Brother Marshall, I'm going to put this in your lap now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Don't give us any more than we can handle, Lord. (laughs) Thank you, Father, for sending your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for the anointing that removes and destroys the yoke of the enemy. Thank you, Father. We have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, have your way with each one of us. Pray through us under the unction of your spirit the way you want for those you want. Father, we pray for those in leadership, Father, that the hearts of those that can be changed will be changed. It's at the heart of the kings and the hand of the Lord. You turn it whichever way you will as the rivers of water. Father, we come boldly and joyfully before your throne of grace with our big brother Jesus. And Jesus said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Ask, and you shall receive that your joy may be full, as it is written in John sixteen twenty three and following. So, Father, we ask you in Jesus' name, because of the blood of the covenant, and we thank you, Father, for sending them in your name. And we thank you, Jesus, for coming to declare the name of your Father in the midst of the congregation, like it says in Psalm 22, verse 22, and over many other scriptures. Thank you, Jesus, for declaring the name of your Father, for expressing who he is, and living Living, allowing him to live through you and, and manifesting forth the miracles that he did through you to show that you want to be involved in your creation. And thank you, Jesus, for coming in the flesh. We thank you that you know what it's like to live as a man on the earth and all the different tugs and pulls. Hallelujah. And that, and that you submitted yourself to the Father it's so perfectly. You said, not my will, but thy will be done. So we yield to you, Lord Jesus. We say, not our will, but your will be done. 
because you're our head. The head of every man is Christ. We yield to you. Have your way with us. Father, we thank you for raising us up together with Christ Jesus that we're seated in him in the heavenlies. We thank you, Father God, for the good plans you have for all of your saints, plans for our peace and not for evil, to give us to them, to give us that cord, that, the faith that we hold on to, that blood covenant, that red rope that goes all the way to the third heaven. And thank you, Jesus, you're there, and we're there by faith in your word, according to Ephesians 2, six. And from our position, seated in Christ Jesus, we bind every spirit seeking to kill, steal, and destroy, every spirit of Zeus, every spirit seeking to, to cause harm to anyone who is and will be a member of the body of Christ, and all those coming into the body of Christ. We command to be no further flow of power communication from the demons in the heavens to the demons on earth to all those seeking to implement Satan's plans in Jesus' name. We speak confusion into the enemy's camp, division and confusion, division and confusion to the enemy's camp in Jesus' name. For Jesus said, I shall decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. And the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? As it is written in Jesus' name. And we cancel the assignment of every witchcraft curse sent forth in Jesus' name. They fall back on those that send them. The curse calls us shall not come. And we plead the blood of Jesus over everyone who is <clears throat> and all the family members of those who are, are and will be members of the body of Christ and all those that the Lord is drawing, the Father God is drawing to the Lord Jesus because we know no one comes to the Lord Jesus except you draw them, Father. So we thank you for drawing them. We plead the blood of Jesus over each one. And we thank you, Lord, you said, when I see the blood upon the houses where you are, the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. And you said in your word, call upon the name of the Lord and you will be delivered. So we call upon your name and we ask you to deliver everyone who is and will be a member of the body of Christ. And we ask you to forgive us our sins, Father, in the body of Christ, the sins of omission, commission, and transmission, Father God, because we know judgment begins with the house of God. We ask you to forgive us, Father, for against you and you only have we sinned in the past. We don't want to do it anymore. So we thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to not only bring conviction, but to guide us into all truth, to remind us of your word, what you've said, Lord Jesus, and we thank you, Holy Spirit, for doing so. We thank you for teaching us and, and, and guiding us in the way you want us to go, shining your light on the path you want us to go. Help us to walk in your love. Help us to walk in peace with the people and to make a distinction between the people and the demons that are manifesting through some of them in Jesus' name, or maybe many of them, maybe even some of ourselves sometimes, even myself. And I, we give you praise and honor, Father. We thank you for the deliverance many of us have received tonight, and I thank you for the additional layers that have been peeled away like layers of an onion peeled away, Father God. Sometimes there's tears involved, Father. And there's always coughing, it seems, and there's always yawning and other things, getting rid of those spirits. We thank you for deliverance and sanctifying us. We thank you for sanctifying us by the Word of God. We thank you, Father God, for sanctifying us. Thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to sanctify us, to change us, to change us all from glory to glory. We ask you to continue to have your way <clears throat> with all of us and all our family members. We thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers and petitions, Father, in Jesus' name, particularly for those that are and are coming into the body of Christ. And we thank you for your promises that are always yes and amen in Christ Jesus. You said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved and your household in Acts 16. And we know Lydia, the seller of purple, believed and she was saved and all of her household. They went and were baptized. Back then, baptism was just not just a little social thing. Baptism was said to the world, yes, I repent of my sins. Yes, I'm a new creature in Christ. Yes, I reckon myself dead to sins because we are crucified with Christ. And we thank you, Father, for changing us. And we, we do count ourselves dead to all the sins that Pat has uh, been reminding us of from your word in Galatians uh, 5, 19 and following. And we don't want anything to do with any of those perverse sins that we've dealt with in the past, any of us. And most of us have dabbled in bad things in the past, Father. But we thank you, Father, that you don't remember them. You remove them as far as the east is from the west. And we're so grateful for that, Father, in Jesus' name. We're so grateful, Father, you said in your word, if two of you, on earth agrees touching anything you ask it shall be done for my father which is in heaven in matthew eighteen nineteen, and that's based on the blood of the covenant that speaks better things than that of abel and we plead that blood as your priest father god under our high priest the lord jesus over all our family members and all those coming into the body of christ and we say father forgive them they didn't know what they were doing and we ask you to deliver them father because you said in your word because he set his love upon me therefore will i deliver him i will set him on high because he hath known my name. Thank you. Thank you for the privilege of knowing your name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him, and I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Thank you for that promise, Father. We are so look forward to seeing Jesus. Now we see in a glass darkly, but then shall we see face to face. 
Then shall we know even as we are known. And we know all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. And your eyes are red with wine, Lord Jesus. Your eyes are as a flame of fire. You know what's in each one of us. You know what's in every man. And, and, and you love us anyway. Even while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood. We are just as if we never sinned when we're washed in your blood because of the blood. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Glory and dominion to you, King Jesus, forever and ever. Glory and dominion to you, Heavenly Father, forever and ever. And all the angels worship before your throne. We give you praise and honor, Father. Thank you for giving your obedient angels charge over us, Father, even as it says in Psalm 91. Because he said his love, how does it go, Lord? Because thou hast made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high of the habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. So, Father, we thank you for your obedient angels, guardian angels, warring angels, including the angel of the Lord that encampeth round about them, that fears them and delivers them. And, Lord Jesus, we do have a holy reverence for you. You said we don't have to fear him which can kill the body only. As it says in Luke, uh, I think it's chapter 12, don't fear him which kills the body only, but fear him which after he has killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear ye him. You're the only one, Lord Jesus, has the power to cast into hell. Will you and Father God? So, Father, <clears throat> by the power of your Spirit, Father, we ask you to forgive us all of our sins. Lead us in the way you want us to go. Continue to teach us. Help us to hide your word in our heart that we will not sin against you. And, Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over all our family members, and we remind you of your promises. And you said, this is my covenant with them. The spirit that I put upon you and the words that I put in your mouth will not depart out of your mouth, nor out of the mouth of your seed, our children, nor out of the mouth of your seed, seed, all of our descendants, from henceforth and forevermore. We thank you for your faithfulness to a thousand generations, Lord. We give you praise and honor and glory. <clears throat> and, Father, we ask you, Father God, to move mightily in this nation, Father God. Pour forth your spirit as you promised, Father. You said, in the last days I'll pour forth my spirit upon all flesh, and not just the United States, but all around the world, Lord God. Yes, Lord, in Syria, Father God, and all the places, Father God. Deliver your children, the persecuted church, wherever they are, in Africa, in, in the Middle East, there, there, there are those who actually really believe in the Lord Jesus, who think they're, that they're Jews, whether or not they are or not, I don't know, where they believe in the Lord Jesus, Father, and they're persecuted by those who call themselves Orthodox Jews. There, there are Coptic Christians in Egypt who are being terribly persecuted. There, there, are, there are believers in, in all these uh, different lands that have been horrifically persecuted, Father God. We ask you to deliver them, Father God. You said we're supposed to relate with those who are in prison as though we ourselves are in prison with them, Father God. And so, Father God, we do. We ask you to forgive forgive them if there's any open sin doors in their lives, Father God. And we know that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever, Lord Jesus. And, Father, when they prayed for those who were in prison, Father God, even when, who was it? It was, uh, <clears throat> I believe it was Paul. Was it, was it Paul? It was in Peter. I guess it was Peter was in prison. I'm trying to remember. And they prayed and prayed and prayed. And then you sent an angel. And you told him to wrap his cloak about him, put his sandals on, and follow him. And he went through, and the gate opened of itself, and he went through, and the, and the shackles fell off, and he walked right out and was free, Father God. And so, Lord, help us to appropriate the freedom that you have available for each one of us, that Jesus paid the price for. I pray, Father, to everyone. Father God, that who is in coming into the body of Christ, you'll pour forth your spirit, Father God, as you promised. In the last days, I'll pour forth my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Father, you'll pour forth your spirit, and you'll change our children, our descendants. You'll hasten your word to perform it, that you will that the seed of the righteous will be delivered, that as you give us that gift of righteousness, we thank you for this so much for the gift of righteousness, Lord, the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Thank you for rendering unto man your righteousness, like you said in, in Job chapter 33. We thank you so much for that gift of righteousness because of the blood. Thank you for washing us in your blood. We ask you to deliver all of our children, all of our descendants, and you said, believe in the Lord Jesus, and you'll be sozo in your household. So we confess with our mouth, Jesus. And we believe it with all of our heart that you are our Lord, our master. Whatever you want us to do, that's what we want to do. That's what I want to do. 
Help me to do so, Lord. Help us, Lord. Here am I. Send me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we believe not just in our heads, in our hearts, because we have your life, your blood, your soul in our hearts. We have your blood in our bloodstream, in our hearts. We believe in our hearts. Father, you raised Christ Jesus from the dead. And because you live, we shall also live. And because we confess that, according to uh, Romans chapter 10, and you said, believe in the Lord Jesus, and you'll be sozo, you'll be saved, healed, delivered, preserved, and made whole, and your household. And we thank you for doing so, Father. We give you praise. So we bind up every hindering spirit, all spirits of lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life. We bind up every spirit of pride, rebellion, anti-Christ unloving, every spirit of bitterness, unforgiveness, resentment, retaliation, anger, hatred, violence, and murder, every spirit trying to operate through any family member, every spirit of feet running to mischief, every spirit, personal and generational spirits of perversion, every spirit of asmodeus, osmius, incubus, succubus, all bound, caged, and chained, gags put in their mouth. We may not speak to any of our descendants or any of us anymore. Any, for, from henceforth and forevermore, we decree it and declare it in Jesus' name as joint heirs with Christ, and as it is written in Romans chapter 8. I think it's around verse 15. And we thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We thank you for all your promises that are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. We thank you for delivering us from the wiles of the enemy. We thank you, Father God. We don't rejoice that the ungodly spirits are subject to us, but rejoice that our names are written in heaven. Father, we do ask you to deliver all those in authority that can be delivered. Heads of households, heads of companies, heads of schools and universities, heads of local municipalities and governments, those that have been bewitched by Freemasonry, deliver them, Father God. We bind every witchcraft curse. We cancel their assignments to all those we're interceding for and will intercede for in Jesus' name, including generational curses in Jesus' name. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. In Jesus' name, Father, we ask you to set the captives free. Set them free from those cages, Father, and we're all in agreement because you said if two of you on earth agree touching anything you ask, it shall be done for my Father which is in heaven. We thank you, Father, for doing so. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are our deliverer. Thank you for delivering us, and we're in agreement. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise your Father. Hallelujah. Well, that that was great, wonderful show when we finally got up rolling. And uh, I think it was very clear, and we give God the glory, and we will see you Wednesday night at 730 and all of our friends, okay? Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you, Pat. We bind up every spirit of backlash, and every every witchcraft curse is returned sevenfold to those that send them. We continue to speak blindness to the eyes of the enemy, muteness to the mouths of the enemy, and then we only hear what Jesus Christ of Nazareth wants them to hear pertaining to this broadcast from henceforth and forevermore. And, Father, we ask you to help every member of the body of Christ to hide your word in our hearts the way you want in Jesus' name. And we thank you for doing so, Father. Love you, Abba. Love you, Pat. Blessings to Dr. Sabrina. Lord, continue to watch over her wherever she is. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Give you praise, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. See you Wednesday. See you Wednesday. Okay.